He popularized the super kick. He was mega over in World Class Championship Wrestling. He feuded with gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, which they forgot to include in this particular episode for some goddamn unknown fucking reason. But he also teamed with the Von Erichs. And then he said, Gary Hart, I'll never reach the apex like the Von Erichs have. I want to turn bad. Sorry to every British person watching this. That's a terrible British accent. But nevertheless, he decided to turn to the dark side. Yes, yes, let the super kick flow through you. So he was one half of the dynamic duo, one of the best acts in world-class championship wrestling history with the late great, taken from us all way too soon, Gino Hernandez, who, unfortunately due to outside forces, met his end. They did an episode on him long, long ago, but boy, oh boy, gentleman Chris Adams was anything but the first part of that when he abused alcohol and abused women. Fucking piece of shit. Let's get into it. I'm John Renton with my review, Dark Side of the Ring, The Gentleman and The Demon. Yeah, I'm not going to be very kind in this particular episode, but I do feel bad for the kids. Why do I feel bad for the kids? Because no kids should have to grow up without their father, and yeah, he had his demons. And boy, Jason Eisner must have taken a look at Kids vs. Aliens and said, Wait, they're saying his eyes glowed red when he got drunk? I can go all cinematic. Granted, the stuff they did in the reenactments here was still better than Kids vs. Aliens. Jesus fucking Christ, that was a terrible movie. I did a review of that. I've done reviews of all the Dark Side of the Ring episodes so far. Next week is Sensational Sherry, who had her demons, but still was somebody that people absolutely respected. You can respect Chris Adams as an in-ring performer. And as being pretty good, okay, halfway decent on the mic. I don't know, he was... Nest and again, you know, take a look at that world-class TV... There were some really good promos. Chris Adams was kind of just somewhere in the middle. Was he self-destructive? Oh, fuck yeah. <sighs> so, the talking heads. Same as it ever was, same as it ever was. No, Kevin Von Erich was in this. David Manning. That makes sense. Iceman King Parsons. I did not know he was still alive, but you know what? Good for him. I also did not know he was 73, which means he was in his early, he was in his, like, Mid 30s when he was popular, or like early to mid 30s in world class. Boo Ray, uh, Brent uh, Parnell, or yeah, Brent Parnell, who was the friend that took Chris's life when Chris was trying to fucking kill him. And also Jade, wait, not that Jade, his daughter, who's lovely, I do want to say. Seems like she's got her shit together. Um, Neil, the younger brother. Jeannie Clark, and James Beard. So you had his first beard, and then you had James Beard. Har, har. So it was nice that they started with Jay after showing the footage doing the intro. <coughs> Jade showed off some programs, and then the jacket, the Union Jack jacket that uh, Chris Adams wore. That was cool. Birthday cards, and you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to just calm down here for a second before I really ramp things up. Chris did seem like he loved his kids. <clears throat> Has demons with alcohol <clears throat> and drugs and stuff like that for a variety of reasons. I mean, sure, life on the road is tough, all that. The world-class crew did have a lot of time off because, especially when you got to 84, 85, after David died and then after Mike got injured and then after Fritz said, hey, it's good enough for Dallas. It's good enough for my boys. Terrible Fritz von Eric impression. Whole point is they had a lot more time off, so they got to more trouble. I did love the world-class championship wrestling footage. I did love the fact that, you know, as Jade was reading the birthday cards and the messages, look, it seemed like he cared about his kids, so that was good. And Chris was tough, and you had to be. You take a look at how there was no give in those fucking world-class rings. Jim Cornette's talked about it. Other wrestlers have talked about it. The super kick, it was super stiff. That's not a euphemism. Apparently, it was really stiff. Kevin talked about how stiff he was. Moving on. And he was agile. He was very good in the ring. You could see that. He was doing, you know, the kip ups and the flips and all that. And he could do some great shit. Also, had to work with the Dingo Warrior, aka the Ultimate Warrior, aka Jim Hellwig. By the way, once again, fuck the Ultimate Warrior. I'm glad he's dead. Talk about that piece of shit. And Neil was, uh, you know, so good at judo, Olympic style, uh, like Olympic level judo. That's how good he was. And Chris Adams got into the world of sports. You had Big Daddy. Hey, look, Big Daddy, it's regular Daddy. That 
I'm sorry, but that is an example of nepotism right there, because nobody would have pushed that goddamn tub of unagile goo. What the fuck? He looked literally like if Mr. Magoo ate, like, the entire town. I'm sure he's dead by now, but, you know, nevertheless. Giant Haystacks, he met an unfortunate end. Um, I believe he had lymphoma or something like that, and... God, terrible. And Mike, uh, McManus, I've heard the name, can't recall. <clears throat> and Chris Adams started up as Black Belt Chris Adams. And he met Jeannie when she was... Or he met Jeannie... When she was 19, whirlwind romance, she moved in with him pretty quick, became his valet, kind of like the second and stuff like that, because they did the rounds, I believe in World of Sports, if I recall correctly. I, I'm not up on my World of Sports stuff, but I know it's a style that people still can do to this day. So him and Jeannie moved to LA, Jeannie became pregnant, and I'm not going to necessarily knock on this, Chris had a wandering eye. If I want to knock every wrestler for having a wandering eye, man, woman, animal, vegetable, mineral, then I'm going to be here all day knocking people. Still, if you are going to, you know, make a commitment and you get somebody pregnant, you don't do that. You don't do that shit. You don't make that commitment. You just don't do that shit. Uh, the time in L.A. was a little bit rough because the money wasn't really there because the L.A. territory, the L.A. wrestling scene was kind of dead, kind of dead by that point. So Chris Adams was born in 55, so by this point he's in his mid-20s. He spent some time in Mexico to earn money, because at that point you would think an Englishman would actually do pretty well in Mexico. And basically, Jeannie decided to move back to the UK to have Jade. And then, well, they, got, they, they moved back, I believe... They moved back either to L.A. or Texas. I'm trying to remember which one, but they moved back to the U.S. And then let's just say that Jeannie talked about how he had, you know, she knew that he was sleeping around, which still isn't cool, because she's got a new kid. She's in a country she's not familiar with. And I'm not saying he was that familiar with the country, but he was taking in the stuff while she was there with the kid. And then there was a blow-up on New Year's, basically, because he said, look, you know, cook, get some champagne, I'll come home, you know, if, if not by midnight, shortly after, we'll have a nice dinner. Well, he didn't come home for three days. So he was either with women or partying, and with women. Regardless, they stayed amicable for the kid. That's an easy word for me to say at about midnight. They stayed, they stayed basically, you know, together, friendly for the kid. They were broken up. But they basically stayed, you know, having a good camaraderie. I don't know why that word's easy for me to say. So, moved to Dallas. And James Beard was a referee. <clears throat> he was good in this. I liked, I, I liked him. I thought it was Manny Fernandez at first. I think Manny Fernandez is dead. But Chris's temper would get the better of him. He beat up a driver at one point because the driver got lost. Read up on the Dallas... Uh, the you know, the world-class spot shows, it would be easy to get lost. Even if you know the state, it would be easy to get lost. Look at how big Texas is compared to a lot of states. But anyway, beat up the guy. And Kevin Von Erich talked about his temper. I don't know why they skipped over the feud with Jimmy Garvin. <clears throat> Him as a masked Avenger doing the super kick and stuff like that. That would have been pretty cool to see. It would have... <clears throat> you could have had Jimmy Garvin talk, you know, with the fact he has no fucking hair anymore. We might talk about that. But then the drinking would lead to his bad side. Then he would team with Gino Hernandez, who had his own issues. Gino Hernandez died at age 29. And I did review, I've done reviews of all these Dark Side of the Rings. You can check that one out. But the Cotton Bowl 85, um, you know, like the head shaving thing. I think Chris Von Erich was even there. You know, the one that they excluded from the Iron Claw. I'm still mad about that movie. But Iceman talks about the parties or bricks of cocaine, Jack Daniels for the Freebirds, and all the stuff and everything. And they're 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 mixing up the timelines because the Freebirds were in world class until like what, just after the first parade of champions. And then yeah, they came back. I think sometime later in '85. I mean, for a couple shots before that, and then full time back in like in later '85. 
But there was weed, and the cops were paying like a thousand dollars to just look the other way and stuff like that. And why, why, why not? I, I don't know why they needed to reenact that, but nevertheless, it was self-destructive. Teaming with Gino, Gino dies in February of '86. Chris, you know, basically became the demon and the glowing eyes. And I know what they were going for, but this was so goofy. So goofy. I normally don't pick on the reenactments. I mean, there have been some that have been better than others, but this was fucking ridiculous. This has this, like he's in a goddamn Italian uh, gallo, or however the hell you say that goddamn thing. He's just in some goofy movie where he just has the glowing eyes and whatever, and it's just so silly. But... Yeah, he gets in a, he super kicks a bartender in Israel. He's just getting in more fights, and he meets a woman named Tony. It's a new romance. Chris Adams uh, Jr. almost said senior. That would have been a ridiculous kid to have. But he would have been he would have literally been his own father. But Chris Adams Jr. You can definitely tell he looks just like he looks just like Chris. It's a dead ringer, and boy, do I mean dead when I talk about Chris Adams. So, there was a flight from a show in the Caribbean, or Caribbean, for those that actually want to pronounce it normally. And he was cut off from drinking. He got in a fight with a flight attendant, basically called her a bitch. She slapped him. I don't blame her. And instead of walking away, he hit her. Now, you could have argued, had it been a female valet... Getting in an argument with a female um, flight attendant? Okay. No. You don't fucking do that. Then he headbutts the co-pilot. He spent time in jail. They moved on from the fact that... I mean, and this would have caused him to take a sidetrack, but he went to, I believe, Wild West Wrestling and UWF. Or maybe I'm mixing those two up. I think he went to UWF and then uh, Ken Mantell... <clears throat> left and took a bunch of the crew and started Wild West Wrestling that I think only ran for like a year. But then he opens his own wrestling school. And Tom Lance, the promoter, was he okay or was he born a baked potato? There was something wrong with that guy. But anyway, Steve Austin was trained by Chris Adams, USWA footage, and then basically he had Jeannie Clark come in to be... The valet, Austin and Jeannie hooked up. And Steve uh, learned some stuff from Chris, especially how to treat women. Read up on it. Just because he's one of the best doesn't mean he wasn't abusive too. And Chris controlled the whole angle, basically told Jeannie, um, watch tape of Joan Collins and Dynasty. Yeah, I actually totally get now why Jeannie Clark was the way she was. That, that makes sense. Look up some Joan Collins and Dynasty if you want, and just see a raging aristocratal bitch right there. So, Steve goes to WCW 1991 with Lady Blossom, Jeannie Clark. Um, his first of four wives, I believe. Pretty certain he abused at least two of them. Probably the first three. One of the biggest box office draws ever, but God damn it, This is about Chris Adams. Yeah... There was issues with Tony. There was like a fight, <coughs> argument. She stops at one point, like on this freeway in the semi or this road. The semi nearly hits her or hits them, and then he slaps her around. I'm not look. I don't know what led to that argument and everything. And you shouldn't. If the kid was in the back. You shouldn't endanger the kid. Sounds like he was being pretty goddamn abusive. So he assaulted her. Chris at, or Kevin Von Erich rather was like, "Yeah, this that that's fucking terrible," and everybody's like, "That's fucking terrible," and it is fucking terrible. Abuse the goddamn mother of your child. What the fuck is wrong with Chris? At? Oh, he's dead. Nobody can ask him. He's a fucking idiot. Anyway, GWF footage. Rod Price had a weave, and then Chris Adams ripped it off, and there was a lot of blood. Ouch. Ouch. Um. <clears throat> Chris Adams went to WCW. I, I must admit, I totally forget that Chris Adams actually was signed to WCW for a period. He was signed there for at least a few years. Because I know he was part of one of the World War Threes, possibly two of the World War Three pay-per-views. 
And I think by 99 he was done, 99, 2000, I think 99. And <clears throat> then he moves in, he basically gets hooked on GHB, a.k.a. Ecstasy. He, Boo Ray's a longtime fan, <clears throat> and Tom Lance knew him, and basically Boo Ray offers Chris to come live with him. Things are things are going okay until the booze starts, but Boo Ray did kind of feel used, but how did this end up happening? Maybe it was like Tom was like, hey, could you take this guy in? I know you're a fan. Could you take this guy? In? I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. But Chris met Linda and oh she was so sweet. She was younger than him, but she was so sweet. And then they're doing GHB and she dies in on April twenty second, two thousand, or April twenty third, now that I think about it. Cause the fact that it was like that late in, uh, at night in the morning. Blu-ray found her. He was horrified. <clears throat> and people then people questioned if somebody had stepped in and talked to Chris, would he still be alive? Because so many people got distant from him. Maybe there were people that tried to fucking tell him during world class and during the 90s to stop doing this and fucking listen. You ever think of that? Yeah, the son has a point. The daughter has a point. Whatever. And then they did the reenactment of Boo Ray shooting him when Chris Adams was trying to kill him, choke him. He wanted to just shoot him in the shoulder and stop him or basically just scare him. You know, but unfortunately, Chris jumped and it hit him in the heart. And Boo Ray, like, you know, still living <coughs> with the guilt because... He said he was going to kill me, but still, you you took somebody's life. Do I think it was self-defense, the way it's being described? Yeah, probably. Grand jury pretty much agreed based on the evidence and all that stuff. Uh, Neil doesn't think so, but he's over across the pond, so what the fuck does he know? Look, Chris, if it was in cold blood, then he absolutely, then Boo Ray should have gone to fucking jail. But he didn't. And what what is his, Chris Adams' legacy? Somebody that could have been destined to be a superstar. Here's the thing, though. After world class, let's just say that he has alcoholism under control. Or let's just say drug use, all that stuff was under control. Would Chris Adams have been somebody that Vince McMahon would have brought in? Maybe. Could he have gone to WCW and done some stuff had he not gotten into legal trouble? Possibly. Hey, at least he taught Steve Austin how to abuse women, so that's always good, isn't it? Yeah, so that being said, don't abuse your partner. What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't do that. I don't care if you're a man with a man, a man with a woman, a woman with a man, a woman with a woman, <clears throat> non-binary, LGBTQ, I don't care. I don't fucking care. You don't abuse the people that you love. You don't do that shit. And Chris Adams absolutely deserved what he fucking got. He got got, and he got shot. Feel bad for the kids? That's it. Nevertheless, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rickland. I'll see you soon.